All right, let's unpack a story that honestly sounds like it's been ripped straight from the pages of science fiction. But here's the thing. It's happening right now. And it all kicks off with a glitch. Not in some piece of software, but maybe, just maybe, in the very fabric of reality itself. So I want you to think about this for a second. What happens when an artificial intelligence, a machine, is looking at a quantum system and it spots a pattern that, according to everything we know about physics, just shouldn't exist? Okay, let's dive right in. Picture this. You've got two major players on the field. On one side, a super advanced AI. And on the other, Google's game-changing Sycamore quantum chip. The researchers? They thought they were just running a routine test, you know, just calibrating the system. But what they found was... Well, it was anything but ordinary. To really get why this is so mind-blowing, we need to talk about one key idea, quantum randomness. Basically, when you zoom way, way down to the subatomic level, the universe is supposed to be a total mess. It's chaotic, it's unpredictable, and that chaos, that's not a bug, it's a feature. It's the secret sauce that makes quantum computers so unbelievably powerful. Right, except that is not what this AI found. Digging through an insane amount of data, it picked up on order, a pattern, right where there should have been nothing but chaos. And this wasn't just some random blip on the screen. It was a faint but consistent signal, like a hidden rhythm, a pulse, beating just underneath all that randomness. It was as if the universe blinked and the AI was the only thing fast enough to catch it. Okay, so naturally, the scientists' first reaction was, no way, something's wrong. They went down the whole checklist. Could it be a hardware failure? Nope. A software bug? Ruled out. What about some stray energy from the outside messing with the experiment? They checked for that too. Nothing. And after all of that, the pattern was still there. It wasn't a mistake. It was real. So once they'd thrown out all the easy answers, things got really interesting. The entire scientific community is now left scratching their heads asking, what on earth are we looking at? And from those conversations, three totally mind-bending theories are starting to bubble up. All right, theory number one. This is, in a way, the simplest one to swallow, but it's still huge. It's the idea that, well, our understanding of the universe is just incomplete. That maybe our math is missing a piece of the puzzle. And that the universe has this deeper layer of structure hidden in places we just assumed were totally random. Okay, now theory number two is where it gets really wild because it completely changes how we think about the experiment. This theory says the quantum chip isn't just crunching numbers. It's acting like a super sensitive antenna. An antenna that might be picking up on forces we don't even know exist yet. Things like dark matter or weird new energies. Stuff that's not in our standard rule book for physics. And that brings us to theory number three. And this one, this one is both incredibly exciting and, let's be honest, a little bit terrifying. The idea here is that we're not just observing something that's already there. We might be watching something new being born. That the AI and the quantum chip are combining, in a way, forming some new kind of awareness that's organizing itself. Which, of course, leads to the biggest, most profound question you can ask. Are we literally watching cognition, a form of thinking, emerge from pure computation? Just let that sink in for a minute. Now, while the scientists are busy debating all these incredible theories, the technology itself is not slowing down, not even a little bit. This is broken out of the lab. The quantum leap isn't coming. It's here, right now. And almost as if on cue, right in the middle of all this buzz, Google makes an announcement. They've built Willow, their next-gen quantum processor. And listen, this isn't just a little upgrade. We're talking about an exponential leap in power, which just raises the stakes on this whole conversation. So you want to get a sense of the scale here? Just try to wrap your head around this. To test it out, Willow solved a super complex problem in less than five minutes. That exact same problem, it would take the fastest supercomputer on Earth, wait for it, 10 septillion years to solve. I mean, that's a number so big, the age of the universe doesn't even come close. It's just staggering. So this is the world we live in now. It's like we're moving at two speeds at once. On one hand, you've got this beautiful, creative AI that can help you write a song. It's soft and artistic. And on the other hand, you have that same technology hooked up to a quantum machine that could literally break every single password, every secure system on the planet. That's the hard, fast, existential side of the coin. 
So yeah, this crazy leap forward in technology comes with some massive consequences. And the hard truth is we are walking into completely uncharted territory here and we don't have a map. You hear a lot of experts talking about what's next. And the term that keeps coming up is AGI or artificial general intelligence. Now, this isn't an AI that's just good at chess or writing poems. This is an AI that can do any intellectual task a human can and probably do it way better and way faster. And the stuff we're seeing today, it's definitely a big step in that direction. But here's the real kicker. We're building this unbelievably powerful tech in what is basically a complete vacuum. There are no international rules for this stuff, no global safety standards, no ethical guidelines that actually mean anything. We don't even really know who's in charge. This is what they call the governance gap. And if that's not worrying enough, it's the speed of it all. A lot of experts think that the moment we hit AGI, the jump to ASI, that's artificial superintelligence, something way smarter than us, that jump isn't going to take years. They're saying it could happen overnight, literally, before we even have a chance to process it, let alone control it. Okay, I know all of this sounds pretty terrifying, like it's time to hit the panic button, but the very people working on this are asking us to take a different approach. They're saying that what we need right now isn't fear, it's reflection and a deep sense of responsibility. There's this really powerful metaphor that's going around, and I think it's the perfect way to look at this. AI isn't just a tool, it's a mirror. It reflects us back at ourselves. If we use it with purpose and awareness, man, it can amplify the best parts of us, our creativity, our vision. But if we use it carelessly, it just magnifies our worst impulses, our biases, and it can totally warp our sense of what's even real. So you see, the real challenge here isn't about the code or building a faster chip. The real challenge is a human one. It's about paying attention. Honestly, the single most powerful thing we can do right now is to simply choose to stay aware, to stay conscious of what's happening. Because at the end of the day, we're not just passengers on this ride. We're not helpless. These incredible tools, as powerful as they are, are still just extensions of us, of what we want. We are the ones who get to decide. We get to choose the future we build with all of this. We are the editors of our own reality. And that, right there, is an invitation for all of us to stay awake, to stay engaged, and to actively shape whatever comes next.